1995, Disney released one of its strangest, <laughs> shocking, <laughs> and most intense pieces of animation that anyone had ever seen. Ooh, I like it when they squeal. It had everything that a 90s kid could want. Video games, horror references, and even... What would Mickey think? And all of this was put together by the House of Mouse to make their aging mascot relevant again. Did it work? Oh. And what exactly happened that led to Disney completely burying it? Well, today we find out as we rediscover the story behind Mickey Mouse and the runaway brain. Wait, was that Minnie Mouse in a bikini? This is it, 1313 Lobo Tommy Lane. Now, if you watched my video on House of Mouse, you'd know how Disney was feeling about Mickey Mouse in the 90s. They were concerned. And by concerned, I mean they were supremely freaked out that their golden figurehead, that had once dominated the animation landscape, was now being left in the dust of popular culture. The company had actually started this comeback attempt with Mickey's Christmas Carol in 1983. But even after an Academy Award nomination, soft box office and mixed reviews put all future plans for the mouse on hold. Usually, in the old days of the Disney studio, they would have put an ironic spin on it. It would have been something satirical. They would have had fun with it. It would have been Mickey's version of the story. But mm -hmm. instead, it's just, it's absolutely a forced march through the same old story. And soon after Mickey Mouse's 60th birthday party, they tried again with 1990's The Prince and the Popper. But unfortunately, the movie that it was attached to ended up being a complete box office bomb. At this point, Disney wound up at a strange crossroad. They were determined to get a Mickey Mouse cartoon off the ground that could be both critically and commercially successful. And in order to do this, they pretty much had everyone at Disney Features Animation working towards something. Anything that could get things moving for the mouse. The problem was, with so many cooks in the kitchen, the studio couldn't settle on a singular vision on what this new version of Mickey Mouse should be. That is, until Disney animator Chris Bailey and writer Tim Hauser found inspiration in one one very unlikely comic legend. I pretty much sat in a room and I would just do funny drawings or situations or things I thought were funny of Mickey Mouse. And there was one that had sort of a Calvin and Hobbes-ish monster pose on Mickey. I, was, I remember being inspired by sort of Calvin acting out Godzilla. And I remember Tim coming in saying, this is funny. And because it was like a possessed Mickey Mouse and he sort of built the concept around that. And our inspiration for the tone was really going back to the original Mad Scientist cartoon. I was thinking, well, what could I do today that would sort of be that sort of dark, fun cartoon Halloween tone? And Tim and I, you know, um, you know, created this cartoon. And looking back at 1933's The Mad Doctor, it's pretty clear to see that, yeah, this was a huge inspiration for what would become Runaway Brain 60 years later. And this was also a completely different Mickey Mouse than what most audiences even now would recognize. <laughs> The added benefit of going with this more playful and loose version of the mouse is that they didn't quite have to sell the higher-ups on a new and improved facelift to the character. Instead, they were just rolling things back to a simpler time, something that would most certainly trigger nostalgia in older viewers, but also not feel so out of place with what the younger audience was already watching. And as luck would have it, all of the planets within Disney aligned in just the right way to give what would become Runaway Brain the green light. Jeffrey Katzenberg, chairman of Walt Disney Studios, overrode the more conservative animation department executives and encouraged Bailey and team to embrace the extreme. If there was one thing that a modern Mickey Mouse cartoon absolutely couldn't be, it was to be mistaken for something that could have been dug out and dusted off from the Disney vault. Now this executive tug of war would come back to haunt Runaway Brain later on, but for the time being, things were moving along. The only question was, where exactly was this thing going to be animated? Produced at Disney's new feature animation studio in Paris, Runaway Brain features the outstanding talent of animator Andreas Deja, whose past creations include Gaston, Jafar, and Scar. I think what really matters with uh, Mickey and animating him is that there's a sense of fun 
involved. It's extremely important to bring Mickey into the 90s and have him share some of the experiences that maybe children or young adults have right now. You see, with Disney's ever-growing slate of theatrical movies, direct-to-video movies, and TV shows, they rarely had full teams just sitting around waiting for a project to fall into their lap. Except this time. Because as luck would have it, Disney's recently acquired French studio was in a bit of a holding pattern. Having just completed work on the Goofy movie and waiting for the production on the Hunchback of Notre Dame to ramp up, they just had enough time to crank something out. And so, after nine months with very little interference or even check-ins from the studio, Chris Bailey sat down with executives and screened his surprisingly spooky satire of the classic Frankenstein tale, starring none other than Mickey Mouse. For the first time in years, Disney's biggest star is back in theater. I'm back in business. When a shocking experiment brings out the animal in Mickey Mouse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's an all new. <laughs> Cartoon Adventure. <laughs> Runaway Brain, rated G. Right from the get go, it's pretty clear that this isn't going to be your typical Disney cartoon. Rather than the cute, cuddly, family friendly mouse that everyone was used to, we were presented with a younger and more playful version. Mickey has forgotten his and Minnie's anniversary, and in an attempt to salvage things, unintentionally signs up for a Hawaiian vacation. And looking for a way to pay for the thing, stumbles into a scene right out of the old Mad Scientist cartoon. <laughs> Dr. Frank and Ollie at your service. You're here for the job? Hmm? Yeah. I mean, no, no. Oh, don't be shy. It's not just a job. It's an adventure! The major difference, of course, is that it's Mickey being experimented on, and that his brain does actually end up getting swapped with a creature that sure does look a lot like Pete, but is referred to here as Julius. While it's not totally clear why this name swap happened, it could be a reference to one of Walt Disney's earliest characters, Julius the Cat, who is featured in the same 1925 short where Pete was first introduced. swapped, Mickey tries to convince Julius that he needs to get back to Minnie. But when Julius sees a picture of Minnie, he decides that he has other plans. There's me, next to my girlfriend, Minnie. Oh, Minnie. Yeah, and she likes my body and my mind <laughs> in the same place at it. Minnie, Minnie. Minnie, oh, why speak of the devil? The short wraps up with Mickey convincing Minnie that things aren't quite what they seem, followed by a chase through the city that leads to the brains in question getting unswapped, all before one final heroic act. That was close! Oh! oh. <laughs> And of course, Mickey and Minnie do end up making it to Hawaii, with just a little assistance from a fully motivated Julius. Minnie, Minnie, Minnie. Ultimately, with Runaway Brain, Chris Bailey had delivered exactly what had always been promised, a fresh and exciting and in-your-face Mickey Mouse cartoon that completely broke the mold. And remember, chairman of Walt Disney Studios, Jeffrey Katzenberg, wanted them to push things to the extreme. And so chairman of Walt Disney Studios, Jeffrey Katzenberg, got plenty of the extreme, with things leaning heavily into horror, along with big, impactful action scenes, and even a sprinkling of sexual innuendo. There was one major problem, though. The company announced the resignation of Disney Studios chief uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg. While rumors run rampant about where Katzenberg will end up, Disney chairman Michael Eisner said today the company will likely produce fewer films. By the time Bailey screened his first cut of Runaway Brain for these executives, Jeffrey Katzenberg was no longer chairman of the studio. He was no longer with the company, which meant that the executives now were responsible for the fate of Runaway Brain were the same animation executives that were against going so extreme in the first place. They, they liked the cartoon, they just thought it had 
you know, because now they were in charge. They wanted it to reflect more of their sensibilities for where it was going. And as a result, Bailey left this screening with a stack of notes, cuts, and other edits that had been, let's just say, suggested. But even after all of these updates had been made, what remained was a heavily toned down but still pretty intense Mickey Mouse short. But at this point, Runaway Brain was all but in the can. And while the studio felt that the short was good enough to release, that didn't mean that they were completely comfortable with its contents. The darkness of the cartoon didn't bother them. I think what they, what they were were upset with or, or not happy with was that the, the whole idea of the toothy monster and you know going after a mini that they thought was just a little a little too aggressive in a sexual way i guess a little too salacious and when runaway brain did debut on august 11th 1995 this fresh and exciting and in-your-face mickey mouse cartoon was attached to something that wasn't exactly like any of those things. When a teenager from the valley drops in on the Middle Ages, the kingdom will rock and heads will roll. Disney's A Kid in King Arthur's Court, rated PG, and playing along as a special added attraction comes an all-new cartoon adventure. I said adventure! Perfect! It's the shocking return of Mickey Mouse. Help! Help! Stop! It's me, Mickey! Runaway Brain, rated G, playing only with Disney's A Kid in King Arthur's Court, rated PG. Starts August 11th. And while it did generate a small but excited fan base that had seen it with a kid in King Arthur's Court, or Hunchback in Australia, or a goofy movie in the UK, or, or even later when it was reissued in 1997 with George of the Jungle, there were just as many unhappy parents that were not fans of this monstrous version of the mouse. Shut up! When asked about it in a 2003 interview, Disney's chairman of consumer products stated that the very fact that Mickey was possessed was very disturbing, which isn't exactly a ringing endorsement and probably speaks to why the company continues to be so afraid of doing anything with it since. This whole experiment started with Disney and Chris Bailey setting out to create a fresh update for Mickey Mouse, something that popped and felt like nothing else from the Disney vault while staying true to the character's playful roots. And with Runaway Brain, it's safe to say that everyone involved was able to achieve this. Which is why it's just so sad that Disney's made it so difficult to watch, at least through official channels. The only physical release was with Mickey Mouse in Living Color Volume 2, part of the limited edition and long out of print Walt Disney Treasures DVD collection. Your only other official option is to purchase a physical copy of the Walt Disney Animation Studio Short Films Collection and claim your Movies Anywhere digital code which grants you access to a streamable version of Runaway Brain. And speaking of streaming, at this point do you even need to ask if it's available on Disney Plus? Of course, there's always the generosity of those that have uploaded it to the Internet Archive and YouTube. It's just yet another example in a long line of historically relevant pieces of Disney's past that the company would rather bury than properly contextualize to the public. But like so much of Disney's history that the company wishes we would all just move on from, Runaway Brain Easter eggs still pop up every so often. Julius of all characters showed up as a secret boss in Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. And one very perceptive fan even spotted that the infamous Wanda Haunted ad had been recreated and placed inside the queue of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Disneyland. And while it's far from any kind of official endorsement, it's at least a bit of recognition of that one time in the mid-90s that Disney pushed Mickey Mouse to get a little more extreme than anyone ever expected. But hey, we're getting close to that 95th birthday of Mickey Mouse. Maybe Disney's just saving it for that. And really, Runaway Brain is just the first chapter in Disney's very long quest to make Mickey Mouse relevant again. Watch this video to check out chapter two of the story and see what it looks like when 500 classic Disney characters are jammed into a single TV show.